what what I, I call the Michael Saylor era, which started about two years ago, was really a step up. You know, it was really it was really the beginning of Bitcoin as a serious professional industry, I would say. And so that was so for eight years, though, it was you had a lot of shit going on. Michael Saylor kind of kicked off a, a new era. I call it the Michael Saylor era that we're in now. Uh, the power is shifting from the fiat money world to the Bitcoin world. And the Bitcoiners are starting to have a lot of political clout in Washington. Uh, they're having political clout in different countries around the world. Um, they're having clout within corporations that are you know, pushing for greater Bitcoin exposure on the balance sheet. So Bitcoin is becoming, as we've often said, it's becoming it's such a perfect asset and such a such perfect money and it's so in, indisputably perfect that its path toward um, this type of domination of the financial world was inevitable as everybody says and uh, and and so now we're seeing that play out you know it comes from the fact that if you've been doing this for almost 12 years you know you're starting from a position where literally 100 percent of the people on planet earth were against this idea or hated this idea or refused to accept this idea and it it was it's been a struggle to get people to look at this idea for 12 years so bitcoin is very very different in that respect because if you come up with something like you know a better mousetrap right the world will be the path to your door you know innovation creates demand and creates um, all kinds of momentum economically and uh, we've seen this in many industries you know um, but with Bitcoin because you bring innovation to money actually the first response anyone has is to throw up because you you're taking something that they hold dear to their psyche in their consciousness and you're saying that's wrong everything you've thought about money is actually wrong and nobody wants to accept that nobody wants to deal with that so very from the very beginning um, when you keep telling people you're wrong, uh, the response is, well, you're toxic, you're, you're toxic, you're a maximalist, you know, that, that's what people respond because they're being told that they're wrong, <laughs> you know. Oh, the IMF clearly is not, doesn't like this, and uh, we just had a story this past week uh, where Bitcoiners are, were in the New York Post, they had a story that, well, Bitcoiners are basically psychopaths. And, Bitcoin is basically evil. Again, I return to my. This is the whole history, you know, as the exorcism that we we that that we've lived for 12 years, having to deal with this uh, denial by the vast majority of the population who do not want to reconsider or consider that everything they have believed about money is false, uh, and yet that's the, that's where we're at. Everything everyone believes about money is false even the gold bugs you know gold bugs who you would think would be more sympathetic to bitcoin they most of them are also hate bitcoin because it challenges everything they believe about gold so to be you know you end up being if you're a bitcoin maximalist you know you're a hated figure because nobody wants to face the fact that they've been dead wrong their whole lives about something very basic like money and so when you destroy that model um you know no one's going to pat you on the back and say thank you for crushing my world view thank you for destroying the paradigms of, uh, upon which i've based my entire existence no they're going to hate you for that but it doesn't change the fact that bitcoin's on this unstoppable path unstoppable vector and the, what we say is you know you don't change bitcoin bitcoin changes you just you know, let it let it happen. You know, you you've been wrong your whole life, but it doesn't mean that you can't start to be right about what's happening.